feels different. So um, normally how I do this webinar or this, this training is I just work with a regular um, vol uh, nonprofit account. I don't usually do the volunteer or the volunteer action center account, um, mostly for time purposes. So if you do want me to go into either of those, um, I do at least tend to log into a volunteer account, just assign, to just show what it looks like when you sign up. So I will do that. But if you do want me to go into volunteer action centers, let me know and I will as well. So I'm going to go ahead okay, and log thanks, in. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and log in to one of my test accounts. So it's just test, it's just uh, Petaluma Awesomeness Society, I think what, what it was. Um, and test one, two, so if you want to play with it. So log in. That's going to take me to the dashboard. So with Volunteer Easy, the core of it is opportunities. So um, everything is about opportunities, is, and that's what volunteers can sign up for. So everything we do that configure Volunteer Easy is basically supporting opportunities. So if you're a free account, then um, a lot of this is actually not going to be pertinent. If it's a paid account, then all the features here will be present. And so if it's a, if basically if it's, in, if it's about the public site, so things like search tags, um, application forms, and stuff like that, then it's not really a, it's not used, uh, it's not part of a free account. But I'm just going to focus on the on everything as if it was a paid account. So when you first get your database, the first thing you do is we have you know the various things we can configure like agreements, sponsors, programs. So I'm going to start with programs. So programs are a way you can organize your opportunities. So program things could be things if you're like an organization that does um, tutoring. You may have um, tutoring opportunities, and so you have a tutoring program. Or you might have an internship program, which are people who work within your office. So they're not tutors. So they're not part of the tutoring program, but they're interns. So you could have a tutoring versus an internship program. And then opportunities underneath those. So um, it might be an internal organization um, difference. So the programs may represent departments. It might be just a thematic breakdown of, of your opportunities. Um, or it could actually be, you know, kind of, like I said, an administrative breakdown. So, um, so that's programs. And I don't know why I'm all nervous with you guys. <laughs> so, what? You shouldn't be. I don't know why I'm being all nervous. Like, I'm usually like, much smoother than this. It's weird. Um, I got the president of the company in the meeting. It's making all nervous. Oh, uh, give me. <laughs> Give, oh give me, give me, give, give me, give me a break. I don't know. I'm, I'm, the, just, I'm just noticing that I'm being all nervous. I don't know why. Yeah, don't. That's that's in, that's right. insane so talk. Don't worry about that. that. Yeah. So, that's funny. with programs, so let's actually go into the programs page. We can actually specify information about the program so we can make on the public site actually program specific pages so people can come in they can read about your program and kind of say yeah that's kind of cool and then they can see the opportunities linked to that program so we can put a description for the program we can give the program a name we can say who the administrator is we can specify sponsors so we'll talk about sponsors in a moment um, we can link the sponsors as you know basically say a sponsor is for the organization as a whole or for particular programs we can specify a logo for the program and we can connect waivers to a program so this then brings us to the next two topics of sponsors and waivers so sponsors are basically companies that would be supporting the organization so if nonprofit easy was supporting an organization, we would be a sponsor. And we can put our name, our logo, our website in the category and levels that we are a sponsor at. So in this example, I actually did that for Nonprofit Easy. And like I said, we can have the sponsorship for the organization as a whole. So when you're on the public site for the organization, it'll actually show at the bottom. Or you can link it to the program and it'll show on the program page. We can also make waivers, which are agreements. So these are things like, um, um, liability waivers, so you know you might have a, a waiver of you know basically don't sue us if you get yourself hurt. It might be these are your behavioral expectations. It could be you know any kind of waiver. Basically, it's an agreement. We can attach these to the program. We can also attach these to opportunities through application forms. So when we create an application form, we can basically make it a requirement that you sign a waiver as part of that form. Which then brings us to application forms. 
So we can create application forms if we want to for a opportunity. So you can either have someone apply to the opportunity and you know they've now applied and their basic information that that they filled in for their record is available to the organization or we can have them fill out a more complicated form. So maybe we want more than just, you know, first name and last name and email and stuff. Maybe we actually want to, you know, ask about their skills and what have you. So we can create a form that asks us or require, we can actually make it required that they fill in information that maybe they skipped in the sign up process. So maybe we want to know about their birth date and most people leave that blank. So we can make it required. So Eric, mm -hmm. Eric, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, let me use a, a real world example. So if it's an organization like Mentor Me, mm -hmm. um, they they could when you say program, mm -hmm. they could set up like like their mentoring pro mentoring actual would be one program, mm -hmm. and then like if they had a special event, mm -hmm. um, I know they have that fundraising ball. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're you're considering a program? So like those two. Yeah, I mean, they could create a, yeah, okay. a program. They could put Mad Hatter Ball either under a program or loose. And so you could have, you know, if you have people signing up to be tutors at the Kavanaugh Center, which they just purchased, then that would be under the tutoring right. program. But Mad Hatter Ball would be separate from the tutoring program. Okay, okay. So yeah. they, I, I got it. I got so it. program isn't required, by the way. Right. Okay. And, then, and then a question around now to, and I might be jumping the gun here. So, like, on the, on the form that's being created, is this something that could make its way to a website? Absolutely. That... That's the goal here. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's why a free account doesn't have this, because without a website, there's no point to doing application forms, because you've probably right. been doing that by paper. But with the website, by a paid account, this is absolutely, everything is going to be, have some tie-in with the website. Okay, so yeah. I'm a little confused on this. This is Allie, by the way. So the free account does not... Uh, you can only then make like basically print pages. Basically, everything it's just for you. It's kind of like the volunteer module in non PE. It's all back end, so okay. there's no you public go. portal with it inherently. Oh, okay, awesome. I get yeah. it. Yeah. However, there's going to be a lot of caveats like this here and there. Um, with a free account, you can attach yourself to a volunteer action center like the Volunteer Center of Sonoma County or United Way, and through and if they and through their public site put up your opportunities. Okay. So basically right, okay. you, you attach yourself as a, kind of a satellite of this organization and you publish through them with a free account right. or with a paid account. But with a paid account, you inherently don't need to do that for, to get a public portal. Right. You can just be on right. Do we have clients that are doing that? Yes. Um, I think so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bridge the Gap is one that comes to mind. They're separate. They're on their own. Uh, Land Pass is a free account attached to the Volunteer Center. So for two examples. So, so the difference being their opportunities are being posted through a, a, a VAC versus their own website, yes. where a paid, a, a paid account, they could Do both. go through a VAC, they could go through a VAC or their own website. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. So paid accounts get their own public portal. Free accounts have to go through a VAC. Okay. Yep. Um, what do you? I'm sorry. What do you mean by that? Volunteer Action Center. It's it's the it's a next. Okay. It's basically a new. It's the next level of account, um, above regular organization. It was one I kind of told you at the beginning. I was going to kind of skip unless you specifically want me to go into it. But basically, what they have, what a VAC can do that an organization can't do, is they can do everything an organization can do. But they can also have organizations apply to be part, you know, members of them, and then publish their opportunities through the Volunteer Action Center. And so the Volunteer Action Center can then approve, deny organizations and approve, deny um, opportunities posted through their website and approve, deny opportunities posted to their programs. So, you, uh, for example, the Volunteer Center in Sonoma County has what's called um, – uh, uh, what's it called? What's the one I want? Um, yeah. Literacy Connection. Let's just say that one. Not – it's a bad example. Oh, yeah. Or RSVP. And so they have their own opportunities posted for their program, but outside organizations kind of team up with them and put, you know, their own opportunities into the Volunteer Action Center's programs. So yeah, so, so Allie, like Points of Light is actually a Volunteer Action Center. Okay. 
So it's think of it almost like a volunteer clearinghouse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or like. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Okay. So yeah, volunteer center. You know, they're coordinating activities with other organizations. So the hub. All right. So where was I? So yeah, volunteer ap application forms we can modify and um, say what questions we want to ask. We can put in. We can we can sim we can say you know you did have the opportunity to fill in all these horribly long large skill set thing when you made your account, but we're only interested in these skills. So please you know say something about these skills. So we can kind of also kind of kind of have to do a, a subset of a greater um, fields. And we can also, and where is it? Um, put our waiver on this page, volunteer agreement. So I can connect the waiver to this page, and it's going to show up down here. So um, we, when we created the waiver, I didn't, I could either have made it a downloadable file that you can review, or I can actually put the text in. So I put the text in. You agree not to sue us. And then when I actually fill out the form, I check the waiver and, and electronically sign. But what the real power with applications comes in is custom data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and save that change. And with custom data sets, I can make custom questions, just like I can do in Nonprofit Easy. So it's actually like the same process. Um, and I can ask anything I want. So instead of just saying you know, the basic questions, I can ask things like, how did you hear about us? Um, have you been fingerprinted by the Department of Justice? Because tutoring, you kind of have to do things like that. Have you had a tuberculosis test, which is something mentor me requires? Um, you know, things like that. Do you have a driver's license? What's your driver's license number? You know, insurance information, things of that nature. So all of all of that is is reportable information. So that you is, can yeah. you can grab that. Yeah, yeah got it. Okay. Absolutely. In addition, when we make a custom field, so education question, why not? That was one I have previously. We can um, make a field staff use only, as well as required. So for example, DOJ background check completion date. This is a staff use only field. It shows up here on the application form, but when it actually went online, this field would be hidden. So okay. I could basically have this field in the contacts in a volunteer's record. The volunteer doesn't fill it out, but staff does. So Got it. This is how I can ask custom custom questions. So, just to go and show you what that page looks like, configure custom data sets. Is here's my data set, here's my fields, and I made the DOJ background check required and staff use only. So, and I'll show you how you can report on some of that. So now we have programs, agreements, application forms. Now we start moving. Now we also have orientations. So when someone signs up online, we can require that they have to fill out the application form. We don't have to, but we can. We can also require that they attend an orientation. But once again, we don't have to. There's a lot of options here. So yeah. we can create these orientations, and we can schedule them and put them up on a calendar. So let me load up my orientation. So here's my orientation calendar on the back end. I've created an orientation. I can have it at multiple locations and on multiple dates. And so I can set it up so it's repeating. I can have, you know, oddball events. You know, it happens, you know, on Tuesday this week and Wednesday that week. And I skip three months and then I do it again on a, on a Tuesday. So I can also schedule it like that. And so I can make it so that an opportunity requires that you attend the general training, for example. And then... Just so, sorry to interrupt, but just to make sure that I'm clear on this, this is for paid accounts only. Yes. Unless they're going through a nope, paid account only. So they, basically, basically a free account, and Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, which I know you will. <laughs> a free account can only, really can just post opportunities. You can't do all of the back end stuff. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure that, because that's what I'm struggling most with is understanding the features. So I just want to make sure that I do understand the features for this before we get off this yeah. call. <laughs> yeah, that's good. that's good. Yeah, so remind me and I'll email you an outline I did for this that I normally go use for when I do this new Doe webinar, and I think it actually says on there what features are and are not paid. Awesome. Also, if you go to the pay, actually go to the pricing page for, vol for Volunteer Easy, I think it says on there as well. I think it does too, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's... Is there, a, um, is there a recorded demo of this that if somebody wanted to 
somebody wanted to watch it on their own time, could they do it? Uh, I do have a rec I did a recording of a webinar from like way back when. Um, it should still all be accurate because I don't think anything significantly changed. Um, and I'm recording this and one, although I probably wouldn't use this one for demo purposes. Right. Yeah, we're having we're having too much fun on this one. Yeah, we're having too much fun. <laughs> but actually, if you go to where is it? Uh, Support.nonprofiteasy.com. Once it loads, hello. I love Google, but it's been really slow for me lately. There we go. And we go to the volunteer easy section. It's um, under tutorials. What did I put it? It's uh, Volunteer Easy Agency Webinar. Okay, cool. So here, I'll... Uh... Could you shoot me that link? Haha, -ha. it's in the chat. For all of us? I just put it in yeah, the chat dialogue for the go-to meeting. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love that thing. Awesome. So, yeah, that, sh that, didn't, Thank you. that should cover most things. I, I think it's it was actually just me and Missy, because no one showed up for that webinar, but... Um, if you want me to redo one, I'll re-record it the next time I do another webinar, because it might yeah, be. I'm sure this. Yeah, I think there might have been fun. a little silliness at some point in it, but that's not too uncommon for me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so orientations, yeah. So people can sign up for orientations, and we can make them required um, as part of the sign-up process. So orientations. Uh, when someone signs up for it, we can we can actually say that they attended, and then that lets them proceed to the next step. So. We said that Bob Awesome has attended this session, so now he can proceed to the next step of, you know, being a volunteer. So, okay, cool. So now we have orientations out of the way. We've talked about application forms and um, programs campaigns. We also have this concept of opportunity categories. These are basically search tags that start coming into play for opportunities. I'm not going to go too much into them. Free accounts don't have these. Um, so this is where you can configure like the issue areas, activity types, who is you know who benefits from the volunteerism that someone might do, does does will do. Anywho, um, the skills, like this giant laundry list that we come with, plus you can add more skills to it. Uh, the age group to be served and the age appropriateness of the volunteerism. No one ever uses this, but it's just like the most important search tag. Um, because I'm always getting phone calls by people saying, like, I'm 13, I want to volunteer for something, what can I? And, like, no organization ever fills this part out. So, <laughs> putting that out there. Not that you're an organization, but if someone... <laughs> okay, so let's actually get to our opportunity. So all that was leading us up to an opportunity. Now we have application forms we can use, we have orientations we can use, um, we have our issue areas, basically our search tags set up, we have custom data sets, we have agreements, we have programs, all that stuff. Now we can start making opportunities. So we go to Manage Volunteer Opportunities. And currently, I already have one opportunity in here. So I can I can edit it. I can manage the volunteers. Or I can create a new opportunity. I can also get a calendar view, which is really nifty. So let's go ahead and create a new opportunity and run through that. So add. So what should our opportunity be? Um, let's go for something that might be ongoing. Let's go and say we are an arts organization. We're a museum. Why not? I do that one a lot. And we're looking for docents. Okay. So we could call this the PAS docent. You, you know, docent, sure. That's the opportunity um, for 2014. So we're looking for docents for, the tw for 2014. It's not part of the education program, but if it was, we could link it to it. Um, well, let's just say it is part of the education program. You know, people are learning. So our opportunity name should be something that is kind of clear, that kind of tells people what they're signing up for. Um, it might be broad, so tw like 2014 docent, or it might be specific, like Mad Hatter Ball volunteers. Or so this kind of this is basically your 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 title for the opportunity that people are going to see. We can assign it to yourself or to some other staff member. Like I meet Eric. Metzler as a user, I could assign it to him because um, currently I'm logged in as Jack O'Neill. I could have kind of other staff members helping me out or helping out with it. Um, I can say whether or not they have to. We have to vet their application or not. So inherently, if I don't check this, they they apply. They're now a volunteer. If I require approval of application, whether or not I have a form or not, it will require that I review it. So 
can mark it as relevant as reviewed. Is it active? So I can archive old ones. Save and proceed. Opportunity details. This is basically your PR pitch. This is what shows up on the public page. So this is where you inform them what they do, how they do it, and why what they do will be awesome and amazing and beneficial to them and the community. Save and proceed. Positions. Free accounts only get generic position. Paid accounts get multiple positions. So this is a way you can say if you've got different types of docents. If you have general docents versus guided tour docents. Or if you have interns, front desk interns versus bookkeeping interns. If you've got people signing up to help out an event, you might have positions such as ticket seller, table host, um, bar attendee, attendant, or set up takedown crew. You know, basically what they're doing. If, if customer service were an activity or an opportunity, phone support versus email support versus training would be examples of positions. So let's go ahead and create some positions. We can call this guided, guided tour docent, save and add new, versus general docent, save and add new. You may also have positions like general volunteer versus, you know, volunteer lead. Stuff like that also comes up. So positions are how you can basically break down the opportunity into jobs. Proceed. Location. Where does it happen? A lot of opportunities have one location. Sometimes they have multiple. So if you're doing a um, internship program and maybe your organization has two offices, like Ceres has two offices, so one intern might be the front desk intern at your main facility. Well, one of them is doing bookkeeping at your off-site office. So you can, you can specify that. Or maybe these people are tutoring and they tutor at different schools. Now you may put the different schools to different opportunities or you might put them into one opportunity with different locations. Um, for, san for simplicity to the sake, I'm just gonna pick one location, the PAS center and move on. But I could put multiple, save and continue. Now, we schedule for those locations. So a location schedule is basically when is, that, when is that location open? So the PAS center, when is it open? Not the times, but the days of the week. And so this is where we get to play with one time for something like Mad Hatter Ball. Or weekly, monthly, or ongoing. Ongoing is basically daily, it happens when it happens. Weekly would be you know, Monday through Friday, monthly would be you know, the first of every month. So let's say weekly, all right. It's the, um, sorry, um, yeah, I got that right. So weekly, all right, it's every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Or maybe it's every first Monday. Or some combination, I could say it's the first Monday and then it's every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of every week. And then we'll also open on the fourth, you know, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. That's a little weird, you probably wouldn't normally do that, but you could. Um, and then the date range that applies to. So for a one-time event, you have one date. For something weekly, let's actually simplify this to be something a bit more sane. Um, there we go. Eh, let's, we'll play with this a bit more. Let's say we open all day week, all week. Um, so basically, you know, what time frame are we looking at? So a one-time event would just be one date. If we set this up to be the month of November, the opportunity is, you know, sign up for the month of November, this would just be November. We set this up to be, a, you know, the year. So I'll go ahead and set this up for the entirety of the year, 12, 31, 2014. I could have used the calendars, but I actually find typing to be quicker. I can also add date exceptions. So maybe this doesn't happen on you know New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all that. So I could add them in as date exceptions. And then save schedule. Cool, there's my schedule. And then I can save for other locations. Um, so kind of think of this, you know, a store is open Monday through Friday. This is that, this represents that part. Shifts will represent the times. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed and we're gonna create some shifts. You can have all sorts of shifts. Morning shifts for Monday, morning shifts for all week, so on and so forth. So we can also make time is flexible shifts. If you're a free account, I believe this is your only option is the time is flexible, but I'm actually a little hazy on that because I can't remember. I don't work with a lot of free accounts. Um, is it? Yeah, I think your only option is time is flexible for a paid for a free account. Um, so I could say, okay, I want to make a shift 
and I've got docents who come in Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. till noon. So I can call this the weekday morning shift. Okay, what days of the week? So Monday through Friday, so not Saturday and Sunday. And it's from, it's not time is flexible. We have a fixed time from 9 to noon. Noon, noon. And which positions do we need? We need guided docent tours and we need general. We need one guided tour person and five generals. Okay, save and add new shift. We can then add more shifts. So that covered the morning during the weekday. Well, what about the evening, the afternoon? So maybe we have a different layout for the afternoon. Come on, volunteer easy, you can do it. There we go. So we might have the weekday afternoon. And this represents, you know, everything but Saturday and Sunday. And we don't, and we have guided tours in general again, but this time we have three guided tours and only two general tours for the afternoon. So save and add new. And then we could do more shifts for like the weekends. And they could overlap and they can use only part of their volunteer, of the positions, anything we need to do. Normally it's not this slow. Okay, and so on and so forth. So do, I, do, you, do you want me to do any more examples? Uh, oh, what happened? I forgot to set the actual, I forgot to set the time. That's what I did. So, and then save and proceed. So now we have schedules, we have shifts and all those for locations and positions and all that. And now we do some search tags. So at this point forward, um, you know, we've done all the basic configuration. We have things people can schedule for. Now we make search tags and do some stuff that'll be appropriate for the public site. So even a free account has this option, they um, they just can't configure what their search tags will be from the dropdown. So uh, the only field is we have to say, you know, what's it for? So this is for, uh, do I have uh, to civic and community, why not? And then it uses these skills so people could say, hey, I want to find a, something that uses programming skills, bad example, or um, a bookkeeping skills. And then they could find opportunities. So once again, like I said, search tags. It is possible, though nobody has done it yet that I'm aware of, to create a team instead of a volunteer account. So a company could say, you know what, I'm going to make a team and I'm going to sign up this team to volunteer. So instead of getting individual volunteers, you get a team. That represents a group of people signing up for an opportunity. This is whether or not you, this determines whether or not you allow it, and then people can search for it. Honestly, I haven't seen anybody use this yet. So, um, save and proceed. We come to the requirements page. So this is where we determine: can a volunteer do their own scheduling, or does an admin have to do it? Can a volunteer log their own hours, or does an admin have to do it? And what orientations, if any, are required? So they have to at least attend one session of the general training. If I had also maybe like a, a, a specific type of training, like um, secondary training, I could require that they have to attend the general and the secondary, and they'd have to attend at least one session of each. So anything I mark here, they have to they would be required to attend. So. Um, and then at this point, save and proceed, and I publish. Since it's a paid account, I can publish it to my own. If I was linked to a, pub to a volunteer action center, I could publish through them instead, or as well. So publish on, basically publish it right now, publish. Cool, it's published. Now I can create a new activity. Any questions? Nope. All right, so nope, now... Oh, is that a question? No, I'm, oh. no, I'm good. OK. So now we can have people sign up for the opportunity. Um, I already have one person signed up for this one here, um, which I believe is Bob Awesome, if I remember correctly. Yep, Bob Awesome. So at this point, you know, I've already scheduled him. He's already attended his orientation. And at this point, all I need to do is log hours. So. I can edit schedules, I can add additional schedules, so maybe he does two different shifts, doing different positions. I can remove him from the opportunity. I can view his schedule, edit individual dates as well. And
And with logging hours, I can log it individually. So I could, like I said, per person. Um, I can also use quick hours and do kind of a batch log hours. This is a cool feature. So basically, I could say from this date to this date, this person did this many hours, this person did this many. So I could just basically at the end of the month, log all my hours in one big go. So that's a very popular feature. Batch log yeah, hours. for people that need their community service hours. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and but this is from the admin perspective. But yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, let's take a look. At, so we're actually. I'll, I'll show you. I'll have a volunteer apply in a little bit. But let's actually go ahead and look at some volunteer records. So volunteers. These are all the volunteers currently attached to the organization. I have Bob Awesome and Awesome Bob. What? Anywho. So same name, different users. I can just manually assign them to opportunities if I wanted to. And I can also edit their records. So I can go to Bob Awesome's record and I can edit his record. So here's his basic information. I can look at his program specific quest, you know, information. I can assign him to a program without him actually applying to an opportunity in that program. So I can make him part of the education program and then fill in those fields. So here's that staff use only field. Or if it's a non-program specific field, it'll just show up on this page. I can edit their interest areas and their skills. Um, if I'm just viewing them, you know, I can see anything I got filled out as well as their, uh, any opportunities that they've applied for and has been assigned to and the training sessions that they've gone to. So a lot of information. I can report on it all in reports as well. Further, if I have a volunteer who's helping me manage other volunteers, I can make them a volunteer coordinator. And then when they log into their account, based on the venue that they've been their coordinator for, they will see all the they'll see all their opportunities that they've been they've been given control of and the volunteers assigned to that location. So it's pretty cool. We use that a lot with uh, EKS with United Way. Uh, coming up in the uh, actually coming up pretty soon so they have a lot of volunteer coordinators that do the scheduling for their volunteers and then their volunteers you know do their tax preparing stuff for their clients tell um, sorry tell me more about that EKS what is that so EKS internet keep it save it is uh, I think it's official name is the VITA program basically uh, United Way I think all of them have a program in which volunteers who know how to do tax preparation come in, they volunteer, and then low income families can come in to those tax preparers and get their taxes done for free. Okay. So that's in a nutshell what the EKS program is. Within Volunteer Easy, we've created a module, an add on for our United Way, where it will um, let you create, it has an opportunity where you can keep track of the locations that the peop that the um, the the words the tax preparers will be volunteering at you'll be able to track who those volunteers are doing what positions then they use volunteer coordinators to schedule the um, the the volunteers and then we created a whole separate kind of add-on that tied into it where we then can let people schedule off-site um, the clients and assign them to the volunteers with time slots it's really cool actually um, and we have a we have a chapter or more of the United Ways utilizing that currently only one is utilizing it but our mm -hmm. goal is so I guess if this is a marketing thing our goal is to get more United Ways signed on to it so um, um, that's kind of Ali and Gret Al Allie and Gretchen, we've got that United Way list. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if you want, I can do a separate thing on, on the EKS module for marketing and sales and all that. Yeah. Not to say it's low-hanging fruit, but maybe it could be something, mm -hmm. a, a lead-in into the United Way mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Or, you know, between, between that... Gretchen and Allie, and then um, some of the success that we had on our peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding with our the United Ways. If we put the two to get those together, that could be an interesting message out to that group, mm -hmm. perhaps. 
What do yeah, I, mean? I agree. Yeah. I agree. I hope, Allie, you're taking good notes back there. You should see my notes right now. Frantic, frantic pen. Cool. Uh, That's see. very cool. Uh, very cool. So, do, 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 what's next? So, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. Oh, I didn't really talk about the public site, designing your public site. So let's talk about that. And then we'll actually have a volunteer make them and use it all. So we have kind of just a built-in editor. It's similar to what we have in Team Raise Easy, um, where you can design basically what your public site looks like. Um, very similar to the Team Raise Easy and um, public site designer and the public pages designer in Nonprofit Easy. So honestly, if you've seen those, it's basically the same thing. We can edit our menu and link it to you know particular types of pages generated from Volunteer Easy, or you know linked off site. You know people can search for the opportunities, put some content in there, recent ones, sponsor show up at the bottom, so on and so forth. We only have currently have one template. We need more. So and then preview the site. So preview site. Yes, yes. I know I'm using my demo site. Uh, regular non volunteer easy wouldn't have all this stuff. It's just because we didn't do the certificates for .NET. And Google's paranoid. So let me go ahead and log into a volunteer account. Uh, I know, I totally... And this is all customizable. I mean, this is like within the template. This is customizable. Yeah, yeah, I, I can customize the colors and all that. I, It doesn't have to be that putrid pink. You know, who am I going to be today? Not, let's be Bob. And do most people get a white label, or how does that work? Um, it's it's not. What do you mean white label? Like in hey, again. a URL to get to this page. Oh yeah, they'll get their own. So let's say pas dot volunteer easy dot net. Okay. Yeah. So similar to like how we do it for projects, Mark. Yeah. Okay. I'm still stuck on this Vita program. <laughs> no, because it's because it's interesting. Because I guess there's certain organizations like United Way, and then others mm -hmm. that are, you know, I guess Vita program accepted. I'm guessing, right? Um, the only ones I know about is United Way, so I don't I don't know beyond yeah. that. Like I'm on the I'm on the. Um, Vita Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Cool. And there, there's a link. There's a link, um, like information for Vita sites in Colorado, mm -hmm. for example. So I guess certain nonprofits are authorized to be Vita sites. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't be going after them. Yeah, all of them would probably benefit from the EKS module. Because so, I wonder, I wonder, do we have any? Sorry, do we have any idea who else has the EKS module? Currently, only United Way of the Wine Country. We designed it with them. Yeah, do we, them. Do we know any of our competitors that have the EKS module? I have an equivalent. Uh, I looked it up once. I do not remember. Okay. It wasn't. It didn't do the scheduling that we do. Um, oh, oh, mm -hmm. oh! 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 Um. Oh. Oh, hold on. I think I did something a while back that might be helpful to you. Uh, where did I put it? Did I put it on the support site? I may not have. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's client scheduling. I thought I did like a... So you do the client scheduling for EKS. And this is the tax preparation, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could have swore I actually did basically a marketing video for Lamesh a while back um, for EKS. It's an interesting little wedge in, perhaps. Yeah, especially since um, you know it is an add-on, so it's extra sales. If I, let me see if I can find that video for you, so I can. Viddler. Mm -hmm. Oh, what did I make the password? Hold on, I need to pause my record. Resume recording. Um, let me go. So let's go ahead and how, show you how a volunteer could sign up. So they can go to, for example, you know, the organization's uh, portal, 
pas.volunteereasy.net in this case and you know they can do a search or they could go to volunteereasy.com and search from there and find from any organization you know so i'm going to do a search and i'm just going to go from the most recent I'm like oh uh docent i like the idea of being a docent let's take a look at that the details would show up here i didn't write any details but this is where those the, the details would go and I can see the schedules when it, when I need people, so on and so forth, sponsors. And I can say, okay, I want to apply for this. Apply. And they'd fill out the application form, which I forgot to attach one. Um, so they'd fill out their form and then hit submit, sign any waivers, submit application. And emails would start flying around. And depending on how, and if they needed approval, then I get an email as an organization saying, hey, someone needs approval. I'd review their application, approve or deny it. Um, and then depending on how the opportunity is configured, I'd go to my dashboard as a volunteer and I'd take the next steps. So if I need to sign up for an orientation, if I need to sign up for an orientation, that would be my next step. If I needed to schedule myself, I'd do scheduling. If my next step was log hours, I'd log hours. If a application form changes for something I've already applied to, it will bug me to refill in the answers for, you know, basically update my form. That's why I'm being harassed right now about it. So I can't, so I have to fill in these. Situations. So like seminar assistant was something I previously assigned, um, uh, applied for. So, and I updated that form. So now I actually have to, you know, fill in something here. Like now I have to sign the waiver and update. So, and then it's going to keep bugging me. I need to, I need a better volunteer account than that one. Mm. All my volunteer accounts have gotten overused, so they've gotten to become a complete mess. But yeah, and so, any questions about it? I can't remember. Could you buy, I can't remember, could you buy Volunteer Easy without NPE or no? That is correct, you can. But you get a discount. Can? You can. Can or, can, can or cannot? You can purchase them both separately. Separately, yes. okay. But if you purchase both of them, you will get a discount. Although I believe Gretchen sure. was looking at re how we do that. So. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that one you might want to talk to Gretchen about how the pricing is going to work out. But currently, you get a discount for Volunteer Easy if you've already got Nonprofit Easy. Uh, 15%, sure. I think. Yeah. That could be wrong. So, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. And now that I've applied for that opportunity... It'll show up on uh, – Bob will now show up – wrong page. Um, now shows up under Manage Volunteers for that opportunity. Yep. Oh, sorry. He does, he'll show up as a – because I made it – pending approval. Sorry. He's pending approval. So I can go, okay, there's some basic information. I can outright reject it or I can go, okay, I'm going to approve it, but let me see it first. Or not, since he had no actual form. Never mind. If he had an application form, I would have had. I would have seen the form. So, so now I can actually manage him. So I can now his next step is scheduling. So I'd go ahead and do all his scheduling. My my son would like this demo that Bob is showing up. My son would like this demo with Bob showing up oh, like he does. Bob awesome. The despicable me, Bob. Oh. He loves that guy. <laughs> Actually, I think that was Minion Dave, not Bob. But yeah, I I, I use Bob. Oh, was that Dave? Minion. That was Dave, not Bob. I think that was Minion right. Dave. Yeah. But yeah, my son would know the difference. They all look the same to me. They do to me. I have to be honest. I only know because that's what when I looked at when I looked it up and downloaded it. It said Minion Dave. Yeah. Someone called me a Minion. We have. Uh, <laughs> Where I live, for some reason, people have taken to turning the fire hydrants into minions. That's awesome. Yeah, so he freaks out every time he sees a minion <laughs> fire hydrant. I totally, <laughs> I totally want them to start doing that around here. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Yeah, no, uh, someone called me. That's a, a great idea. Someone I know, me. isn't it awesome? They yeah. had hair. They had hair and a uh, and glasses, and it's so funny. I live in like. The city of Dunwoody, it's like one of these little offshoot cities of Atlanta, and all the politicians get up in arms, um, like, who's doing this to our fire hydrants? And I'm thinking, this it's is the greatest thing it's, ever. It's public art. Let them do it. It's technically vandalism, but who cares? 
It's awesome it's vandalism. A, it's like people who go under I bridges love. and make awesome murals. It's vandalism, but come on, it's awesome. Yep, yeah, absolutely. There's this creek we'll have to, by my house where they, we'll have to, someone did some paintings and the city painted over them. I was like, you jerks. Loosen up, people. Loosen up. Like, and now what's there? Now there's just good old graffiti. Like, when it was paintings, the graffiti artist left it alone. When they painted it brown, the graffiti artist was like, oh, cool. Blank slate for me. So. That, that would be called the law of unintended consequences. Exactly. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's, I think, more or less all I got. Um, sorry if it wasn't presented as clearly as I do sometimes, but. Because um, we were making, because we were making you nervous. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was about, but I'm better now. Uh, 